Today we're going to talk about Maximum Football 2024. Some of y'all may be familiar with this video game franchise, and some of y'all have maybe never even heard of this game before, but basically it is a football simulation game developed by Maximum Entertainment, and it's releasing this year. And it will be free to play on PS5, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, and PC. The last edition of Maximum Football that was released was in 2020. It was called Doug Flutie's Maximum Football 2020. And I believe the guys that created the original series of Maximum Football actually sold it. And this new team has taken over and they're simply calling it Maximum Football. And the 2020 version that I bought and played was so bad. I hate saying that because I love supporting indie studios and indie games. And, you know, it was a small team that tried to create an awesome football experience. And I love the effort, but maybe the project was just too big for them. I think they only had like three guys making the game, but I paid like $30 for the 2020 version and the game was simply unplayable. But they gained a lot of traction because they were bringing back college football. They were all fictional teams, but you could start a dynasty, you could recruit, you could basically just create a school from scratch, kind of like Team Builder. So it looked super cool, but then once I bought the game, the gameplay was horrendous, and then I was hoping at least the simulation would be good, like the recruiting and the team management, and again, that was pretty bad as well. So I don't say that to just trash on the old developing crew and the old game, but I say that to say this new version of Maximum Football is significantly better. You're watching the new trailer that just dropped right now, and if you compare this with the 2020 version, you'll see a massive improvement. Now, this is still an indie game with a small studio creating it, so it obviously isn't a AAA title, it isn't AAA quality, this doesn't look like Madden or College Football 25, but like I said, it's a massive step forward from the previous editions. And they have a free demo right now on Steam, so if you have a PC, you can go ahead and try it out. I actually played it yesterday on stream and that's the gameplay you're watching now. But I wanted to give my thoughts on Maximum Football and really just indie football games in general. Now keep in mind this was just a free beta, basically just a free demo. All you could do is play an exhibition game with the two teams that are currently available right now and there's only one stadium you can play at. But then you can also go and create a custom team. You can't play with them or save the team, but it shows you the customization tools that will be in this game. So that's still pretty cool. So my first initial thoughts on this game as I was playing it is, like I said before, this is such a massive improvement from the last release of Maximum Football. Like last time it was legitimately unplayable. This time it's definitely not unplayable. Again, it's not a AAA studio game. It's not AAA quality but it's definitely playable. One thing I definitely enjoyed was the presentation, the pregame, the coin toss, the fans in the stadium, the replays, all of that was really good. Again, way better than last release. It was awesome to see that you could audible in this game. You could also call hot routes. I did not expect that from this game, so that definitely made the gameplay better. And some of the animations are pretty cool. Like the, the tackles where the big hits happen, those look pretty good. The only issue with those though is that they happen literally every single tackle. It's like you just got your spine snapped in half. They definitely need to tone those back and I've heard that the developers did say that they're already working to make those tackles less frequent. I also enjoyed the fluidity with the quarterback specifically. It felt like I could move around with him pretty well. I could throw on the run. I could scramble. And that was definitely an issue with the 2020 version. It felt like I was a wooden plank in the backfield. Like I couldn't really run around. I was just super stiff. And it's much more fluid in this game. It was also cool to see when you score a touchdown, you have the option to pick from four different celebrations. So that's definitely a unique feature that this game has. And you'll probably see that later on in the gameplay. But at the end of the day, there's definitely a lot of issues with the gameplay. It's pretty slow. It's still pretty clunky. Running the ball seems kind of boring. Like it's a consistent three or four yards, but I feel like it's kind of hard to break off a 10, 15, 20 yard run in this game. And if you just consistently throw the ball deep downfield, you'll probably end up scoring fairly consistently. There definitely needs to be maybe some tuning issues with the defensive AI. And similarly, when I'm on defense, it felt like sometimes the CPU was just throwing the ball downfield and I couldn't really do anything to stop it. I don't know, maybe I just haven't played long enough. I'm not good enough at the game, but it felt like it was kind of random. They would just throw the ball. My defenders were around the area they threw it, but the guy would just catch it. And they said this game is based on physics, which I think is true to an extent. 
However, the tackles, like I said, that happen way too often where they're super violent, big hits, and it knocks you back, that happens like basically every single time. So I'll be on the two yard line just trying to power it in and it's impossible for my running back to fall forward, which makes it very difficult to score a touchdown up close when you're like in goal line formation and you're just trying to run the ball. And then a small thing I didn't really like are the replays after every single play and I have to hold A to skip the replay. Like, let me just click A to skip it. It definitely gets annoying after a while. Oh, also you'll notice there are two play clocks down there on the bottom right on the scoreboard. So that's definitely something that needs to get fixed. All things considered, this gameplay is way better than the previous version of Maximum Football. I'm happy to see that they're making improvement. And like I said, it's definitely playable. It's not unplayable like the previous versions. And so far with the current gameplay that I have experienced, if I had to rate it on a scale of 1 to 10, and let's just say like Madden College Football is going to be around like a 9, this game is probably like a 4. I know that seems pretty bad, but like I think Maximum Football 2020 was probably like a 1. So in a few years, they've gone from a 1 out of 10 to a 4 out of 10 in my book on the gameplay side of things. And like I said, this game is free to play. It's not $30 like I paid the last time this game came out, which in my opinion was kind of a scam. I think the free to play route is such a smart idea that's a very common thing that games are doing these days where they are free to play and the way they make their money is simply through cosmetics. Fortnite's probably the most obvious example of this. That game is completely free but they've made like billions of dollars off of Fortnite. And you can probably tell already that Maximum Football has really tried to showcase the jerseys and the helmets and the different equipment and the cool colors and different designs you can make on these jerseys. So that's definitely where they're going to make their money is through cosmetics item purchases and we already know there's going to be season passes in this game but by making this free the player base is going to be a lot bigger and the devs can continue to build this game alongside the community now when i think about an indie game like maximum football i'm probably not going to play it for the gameplay anyways i would play it for the simulation purposes like why would i play maximum football when i can play madden or i can play college football 25 there needs to be something that draws people to this game i think where maximum football could really make a name for themselves is in the simulation and the customization i mean that's why i bought maximum football the last time around was because i could literally create a college team from scratch like team builder and that was before ea announced that college football video games were returning so here you can see the game modes that will be available in Maximum Football once it releases. Exhibition is what we played during the beta and that's the footage you just watched. They also have a 1v1 ranked mode which is cool, I always love a good ranked mode. And then you'll see here they have Dynasty if you want to play with college teams and they have Franchise if you want to play with professional teams. So it's pretty cool that they have two options there, Dynasty and Franchise. Obviously the teams in both modes are all fictional, none of them are real teams. And when you look at these pictures, dude, they're pretty crazy. This is from Dynasty mode, as you can see it says my college at the top. And in the bottom left, you can see the weekly expense, the total weekly income. The middle section says team facility, stadium budget. So it looks like you're gonna be able to upgrade facilities, upgrade the stadium. You have a budget you have to worry about. And this is what I'm talking about. Obviously the gameplay is not going to be better than Madden and college football, but when it comes down to the nitty gritty simulation stuff, they could give EA a run for their money. Now I'm not saying they will give them a run for their money, but that's where I think a game like this needs to focus. Don't worry about gameplay as much, worry about the simulation and customization and the immersion. Speaking of immersion, you can see they have their own little social media platform built into this game. I mean, look how cool this is. I know this isn't exactly how a scout would tweet, but it's still super cool to see. He says, with his performance at the Combine, Raymond Norcross is making a strong case for a 21 rank. His catch and traffic rating is through the roof. Now again, obviously no scout in real life would tweet his catch and traffic rating is through the roof, but you get the point. Like That's super immersive, and it actually gives you valuable information about this recruit. This right here reminds me so much of MVP Baseball 2005 Owner Mode. If you're familiar with the channel, you might have heard me talk about that game before because I think it's one of the best games ever. But in that game, you could literally like upgrade your stadium 
and control ticket prices and hot dog prices and all of that. And you can literally do that in Maximum Football. You can see the ticket prices there, food carts, merchandise. If you look there on the left, it says that Cobblestone Park is tier one and you can upgrade a tier. So it looks like stadium renovations and upgrades are in this video game. That is something I've been asking for EA to put in College Football 25 and I doubt they do. So that's something that Maximum Football has that EA doesn't. Here you can see there's literally conference distribution in this game. You can see they're getting $10,000 from the conference. They even have government support, half a million dollars in government support. Like I have no idea if this game will be good or fun yet, but I love the details and the effort they're putting into this. You can see the coach right here. He's level two. He has different ratings for different areas like scouting, charisma, player development. You can see on the right, he has recruiting strategies. His number one priority is getting high ranking prospects. His number two priority is getting team needs. Again, the detail just looks really freaking cool. And it looks like they actually kind of stole skill trees from NCAA 14 in those games. And then you can see the team customization here, which is basically just like team builder. You can choose different logos. You can change your team name and the city and state that they're located in. And again, the combination of having a college football video game with this customization was what drew people to maximum football in 2020. Unfortunately, that game wasn't any good, but hopefully this version, I mean, it's already clearly a massive improvement, but hopefully once we get our hands on the full game, It'll actually be a solid video game. And the devs said they wanted to create a sandbox football game. And I think this is exactly what that is. As you can see from this customization here, it's all about what the user can create. And you may have noticed they have Zenith helmets, I believe is how you say it. They also have Adidas gloves and Adidas cleats. So that's pretty cool to see that they have some actual branded stuff in this game. So to wrap up this video, the gameplay, like I said, is so much improved from the previous Maximum Football game. Still, it's definitely not amazing. It's clearly an indie game from an indie studio. I don't think you'll find yourself putting a ton of hours in playing exhibition games. But there's so many positives about this game. It's free to play. There's so much customization. It looks like just from the pictures from the trailer, there's so many little details with recruiting, social media, budgets, stadium upgrades. And it's likely a lot of those things aren't even in College Football 25. Now, I don't foresee myself playing this game a lot. I'm definitely gonna give it a try since it's gonna be free. But obviously my focus is gonna be on College Football 25. It's the first you know, licensed college football game we've had since the year 2013. But like I've said before, competition leads to better products. So who knows, maybe Maximum Football can do things really well that pushes EA to do better. Maybe Maximum Football can find some success and College Football 25 will be successful and that'll lead to 2K making a game too. You get the point, that's kind of the whole point of capitalism and the free market, like competition forces the people to create better products for the consumer. So what would it take for me to put a lot of hours into this game? I've kind of already alluded to it. It won't be the gameplay. The gameplay isn't gonna get me to play this game, obviously, because Madden and College Football 25 are gonna be way better in that department. But if Maximum Football can deliver in the simulation and the recruiting and all the little details and immersion, that can make me play this game. So obviously we'll have to see. It releases sometime this year. They haven't said the release date yet, but sometime this year, it'll be after College Football 25. So maybe after a few months of playing College Football 25, this game will come out and we'll have two games to play. Hopefully this game will be good, but I'll continue to update y'all on College Football video games. So definitely subscribe here and follow me on Instagram at bringNCAA back. I post everything there first.